Hey, thanks for checking in on Bathtub Sir and welcome back to Pyre. Last episode we were joined by a new companion, so Gilman previously of the Pyre Hearts, but he's ditched them fools and now he joins us. Um, he's pretty handy actually, he's a worm who's helped us get across the Sea of Solace and we are now in the hot lands of the Black Basin. But it's time to continue our journey onto our next riot. And I'm sure there'll be a branching path here. Oh look at this, we can backtrack it seems to Highwing Cove. The high road to the nest of Triestite is patrolled by the Commonwealth's ancient enemies. The lone minstrel believes he can negotiate safe passage with the harps via this path. Or we can go Blackshaw. And this is the low road to the nest of Triestite. It passes through razor sharp sands. Joe the Real wishes to avoid the harps by staying on low ground. Now, last episode, you may remember, remember me saying I'll feel bad if we don't go with Joe the Real this time because we always side with her opposite. It's usually been the rookie. Now, I don't know how, I, I've got to be honest, I put a lot of faith in the Lone Minstrel, and I reckon this could actually be the better option. But, for variety's sake, I'm going to put our faith in Joe Drill and hope that this pays off. I've got a horrible feeling it won't. What's the worst that could happen? Everyone dies? We lose the rights? We have to stay in Downside forever? No, I'm sure. I'm sure nothing like that will happen. The shattered lands of Blackshaw proved difficult to reverse for the Black Wagon. Yeah, we should have known that, to be honest. And what is it? On a bed of black glass. Oh yeah, we remember that. Joe the Real searches for a solid path forward, to little avail. Uh, to little avail. Fire on these blasted lands, how are we to proceed through this? Perhaps I may be of some assistance. This place is not so unfamiliar to me, nor are its hidden denizens. Please remain with the others until I return, madam. I shall not be long. No minstrel here to save the day again. Anyway, the minstrel disappears into the cliffs before Joe the Real can protest. In the meantime, you and she continue to keep watch, sensing unseen eyes. The last time that one disappeared on us, we searched for him for days. But this time, he soon returns. Ah, oh, awesome. I have secured safe passage through the nest of Triesta. We may proceed. Secured safe passage with whom, exactly? Just then, a winged woman dives down from the sky. She looks Joe the Real up and down and then... Oh wow, it's Farah from Overwatch. Looks awesome. Oh my god, there, there's no arms, it's only wing. Cool. She soars away without a word. The lone minstrel says nothing more, either. Joe the Real scowls deepens. For centuries, the Commonwealth withstood the high wing remnants, treacherous assaults, thanks to soldiers such as she. Oh, so she knows, she knows of this kind and their enemies. So the Highwing Remnants are the last fighting faction of the Winged Harps, the ancient enemies of the Commonwealth. We may have read that before, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, are you kidding me? She lost four hope? <laughs> God damn it. Joe Real, that's it. Your uh, your opinions, while they may be heard, they will definitely be um, ignored. <laughs> Does that make sense? Basically, to hell with you. Stop losing hope all the damn time. Let's journey onward. We should have stuck with a minstrel. She must have the lowest hope imaginable. Oh, it's the unicorn with the breasts. That is a fierce looking unicorn. At last you arrive at the nest of Triester, where the next rite is soon to commence. You cannot shake the feeling that unseen eyes watched your wagon's ascent and remain watching now. We can commence the rite. Oh, we've got a new page, the hunt for myrrh. Isn't that the dude from Practical Jokers? That little bald fella, myrrh? <laughs> He's my favourite, I think. Or maybe Joe. Okay, the hunt for myrrh. In the words of Gol Galafenian, the Master General, My Emperor lay there, bleeding and alone, stranded in a bitter land beyond the river. With fleeting consciousness, he understood the folly of his quest and the folly of his rule over his country. Thus did he await the last embrace. It was the imp, Hatab, that nursed him back to health and warned him often of the dangers he would have to face. Many enemies of Myrrh would come in search for him, some under employment by the rope caller, some longing openly for the cold, uncomplicated vengeance. Or, yeah, does that say vengeance? I think it does. I was one of them. I plunged into the river willingly. We needed to be sure he was that he was dead. Oh, what? Wow, so they were jumping into a river, potentially sacrificing their own life just to make sure Myrrh was dead? Strange, but there's nothing, no one to talk to in here. A little bit gutting. But at least it means we'll get on with our right a bit quicker. There's, is there anything to sell? Or even buy? Oh hey, you guys. What brings you way out here? No wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. What I want is you to get the best deals in the downside. Whoa, a bunch of new stuff. 
a righteous flame. After dousing the adversary's pyre, the bearer's pyre is restored by up to five. Cool, that's not bad. Any adversaries by the bearer take longer to return, and that's pretty good as well. How much is 180? Oh, we have nine gold. <laughs> Sorry, Ron. Sorry to waste your time. Cheapskates. Sell something for nine gold, and maybe we can talk. Um, I'm just going to quickly pop in here and see if Sandra has a scribe trial. Um, no, deems none of your fellow exiles worthy. Okay, farewell. You know where to find me. Yep, in the big green ball. Right, let's do this. Commence the riot. You and your fellow exiles gather on the blasted lands called the Nest of Triesta, expecting the imminent commencement of the riots. You see no sign of adversaries, but then you hear a whooshing sound above. It's going to be Farah and her crew, isn't it? Wow, she looks awesome, like Lady Gaga, with wings. This, then, is what passes for the Nightwings. Now, such a rabble. Not even dressed for the occasion yet. It seems the scribes have little pride in their tradition. Hold your tongue, little bird. We have not come for talk. No, you have come on behalf of your commonwealth. Mark well my words, you horned filth. When at last we free ourselves, your home shall burn. With that, the harp swoops off as Jodoril glowers after her. Oh, Jodoril's going to have a vendetta and ask her to be put in this riot. But she's going to have, like, non-existent hope, so if you get banished, that'll probably be it for the whole game. Anyway, a harp. Wings warriors from the mountainous offskirts of the Commonwealth, where they are feared. They fled to their mounting nests, awaiting the day when they would darken the skies and retake the land. Yeah, they seem horrible. It is only then that you realise another harp has come. Wow, this one looks awesome. I like the character design for these harps. She is quite serious, I assure you. I can help you sort her out. It's in our mutual interest. You know naught of my interest. Hmm, let's give this another shot. Hi, my name is Pamitha Thien. Or Dane. Oh god, another damn word. Pamitha Dane? Because if you get rid of the N, that just says they. We're going to go with Dane. Pamitha Dane. <laughs> she appears to be one of the winged harps of the high wing remnants, now bound in exile. The Shirley one back there. That was my blood sister. No need to judge her harshly, though. We've only just we've only met just now. Though, I must say, something about you reminds me of her. How dare you implicate that I have anything in common with your ilk. Just then, Hedwin shows up to intervene. He whispers something to Jodoril. No, Hedwin. You cannot be serious. Jody, I'm asking you to trust me on this one. Am I perhaps interrupting something? Say, by the by, however, did you make it all this way across the sea? Didn't you fly in? Trust is something I am loath to give away, Hedwin. But you have set our course thus far, and I have followed. So, do as you must. That sounder would had better have an explanation for all of this. Jodoril storms off as Hedwin turns to you. What's your take on this one, my friend? Our informant wants someone for each mask. I hadn't expected we'd run into a harp, yet here she is. What are you getting from her? You turn your attention to Pamitha, who has been watching with bemused interest. Ah, a reader are you? Pleasure to make your acquaintance, darling. Well, here I am. Gaze intently all you like, and tell your comrade there the truth of it, why don't you? You sense that she is conflicted about something, though you do not know what. You also sense, however, that her motives, here and now, are earnest. Hedwin wants to know your initial impression of Pamitha. <laughs> she seems alright. It may be that her training gives her some resistance to your scrutiny, Having only met her, you cannot sense whether to trust her. See, I don't know whether to trust her, I'll be honest. She seems alright. Does she really? I want to say so. She seems like she knows something we don't. You know what I mean? I've got to admit, I have no clue. You tell Hedwin that you cannot adequately judge Pamela for just yet. While you have certain reservations, you defer to him on what to do. I understand, my friend. And I appreciate your backup on this one. Above all, I need to give Sounderwood the benefit of the doubt which means doing the same right now for Pamitha. We've come this far thanks to a certain faith, and right now it's telling me to take her with us, even though Jodoril isn't going to like it. He then turns to Pamitha. I'm Hedwin. We'll accept your offer on two conditions, if you'll hear me out. Conditions? Why sure, I love a good condition or two. First, after we're finished here tonight, you come along and make sure that your blood sister and her friends don't give us any trouble when we're headed out. Second, You'll have to find a way to get along with Jodoril, whom you met earlier. Brilliant! I had no plans to stick around here anyway. As for your demon friend, no doubt we'll get on famously. Now, I don't suppose you have an extra set of raiments I could use, because I think the right is getting started. You look up and see that she's right. 
Pamitha then joined you. She has a score to settle. Bid her welcome. Welcome, Pamitha. You can sit next to the other newbie, Sir Gilman. Cool. So we've got this sport for choice in this right. We're going to have to take Pamitha and Sir Gilman. And I don't imagine putting Jodoril on the field as our third is a good idea. Each of the different races of the downside has a distinct set of abilities. Yeah, we've we've learned that. Can't wait to try Sir Gilman. I thought for sure the stars would have eluded you by now. I should know better. Yet here you are, somehow, upon the nest of Triesta. Have faith in us, dude. And you've swelled the ranks of your triumvirate not merely with another, but with two. One from the pyre heart, no less. And one who seeks the favor of the adversaries whom you'll imminently face. Yeah, Pamath is a weird they one. Are the essence. Winged terrors, as you soon shall see. So I'm guessing they'll be in the air a lot Can for this right. For freedom, match their hatred for the vibrant country that was once your home. From a distance you observe as Pamatha, now clad in Nightwing's raiments, heads towards your adversaries in the rights. You, what sort of heathen heart would dare take wings against us? Your new companion then loosens the bindings on her mask. Hello there, Tamitha. What do we know about Tamitha? She's one of the wing hearts. Yeah, we know that. Pamitha's blood sister stares back at her a while before responding. What in the saint's name are you doing here with them? So Saint Triester Tephis? <laughs> She's the fifth of the eight scribes of the Book of Rites, known as the Disciplined or the Blessed Born. The eldest of the harp matriarchs, she anointed the Book of Rites and gave its words their power. Doubtless come to dig your talons in my back again. No, sister, I've come to have a word with you. Save it. I cannot help but share your poisoned blood, but I shan't ever count you as my sister. You expect me to believe that you came all this way for talk. You waste your time as ever. What's life if not a waste of time, dear sister? Give me a chance, why don't you? What do you even have to lose anymore? Besides, I've come a long way. Silence, you shan't have come here, and the time for talk is long past. If only you could see yourself, again, consorting with my enemies. Fine, then savour their defeat, but I warn you, stay away from me. Mm. Pamatha says nothing more as her blood sister turns away again. God, that's a pretty heated sibling rivalry. Yeah, look, they're all in the air. Pamatha gets your attention. Listen to me, reader darling. The rest of you are ill-equipped to navigate this place. Let me conduct this right on your behalf, and my wings will bring you victory. Dear lady, your words ring true. This knight is flattered that you have not eaten him, as is the tendency among your kind. Oh no, that would be awful, awful, awful. Please do not eat Sir Gilman. This knight hereby volunteers his post in a triumvirate for thee. Sir Gilman refuses to participate in the rites this night, so that Pamatha can face her sister. Oh, that sucks. I wanted to try him out. He's got that awesome tail whip attack. You observe the, che the treacherous terrain. Pamatha should be better suited to the rights here than the rest of you. Now we shall get started. So we still don't have to choose her. It doesn't seem, but we obviously will. How's our hope? 16. And compared to Jodoril's hope, 5. Goodness gracious, we're not doing that. So should we also take Tizzo because he also flies? It makes sense, doesn't it? And she does 20 damage, which is good. Okay. Why, I thought you'd never ask there, darling. I accept. If the little bird is going to conduct the rites for us, then I shall not. <laughs> that does not bother me, Jodoril. You are hopeless. Um, should we... I think maybe we should give Tizzo a run out because he flies. It's got to be... Tizzo. It's got to be a, a benefit to us. Tiso promises to do his best against Tamifa and the Essence. And then finally, good old Hedwin. I hope we can rely on you, buddy. It's been a while, but I think you should uh, get to have a runaround. This should be interesting. You can count on me, my friend. It is done. I've got to say, I am totally unsure about how this setup is going to go. But we'll see. Come then, sister. Perhaps we are finished here. You'll spare a moment, oh, perhaps when we are finished here, you'll spare a moment of your time. I shan't be tricked by you again, Pamatha. How poetic that we meet here in the downside. I can think of nowhere else where I would rather see you rot for what you did, to our people and to me. Oh my god, so Pamatha has a pretty uh, dodgy past by the sound of things. Alright, it's time to rock. Pamatha seems to sense your presence and then catches your attention. 
Hello there, reader darling. If I'm to be at your mercy in all this, I'd like it very much if you could minimise how often I'm to wallow in a state of banishment. Quickly, let me show you what we sisters of the Hiring Remnants can do. Hold X to fly until stamina depleted. Okay, so it's just a glorified jump. Because we can't cross this even when moving normally. It's a Saint wrong. So this guy knows about Pamifer as well. Right trigger to dash. Oh, that's a big dash. Pamifer's dash knocks others away. Right, so she has no attack. Oh, she does. She has a tackle. Hold B to tackle. Wow, awesome. While tackling, Pamifer cannot be banished. She seems pretty strong, I will admit. See, darling, we hearts, we're not so bad. Now I suppose we'd better get to work, hmm? Just don't go underestimating Tamifer over there. I'll trust you'll do the best you can. To the skies, sister sisters. <laughs> Talon formation. Right, so if they attack a lot, we won't be able to banish them. If they use their tackle. Get there. Oh, we should jump. Oh god, I've totally forgotten. All of my attacks! <laughs> that was terrible! I got really confused. My thumbs thought they were fingers and my fingers thought they were toes. I didn't know what was going on. Tizzo, was it? Tell me something. You know how to fly. Tizzo is rather proud of his ability to flutter, as a matter of fact. Then listen up. My blood sister there, she'll swoop right past you if you're careless. But we hearts simply cannot get much out of you down here. So, if she goes for any unfair tricks, just jump for it, and catch her in the axe. She always hated when I used to do that to her. Okay, we'll try that again. Press X to block flying adversaries. Oh, bloody hell. Oh crap, come in. Oh, that didn't work because... This is, this is the worst this ever been. Oh, nice. We blocked it. Who are we? No! Oh my god, that was a close one. Okay, I think we're gonna make it. Brilliant. Um, I don't know what's wrong with me on this one, but I just can't get my head around it. Oh, quick! No! Oh my god, did we get it? No, we didn't. That is a terrible, terrible loss. I've got a horrible feeling we're gonna we're gonna lose this terribly. Okay, let's get this on. Jump for it. How oh, we made it. Didn't even need to jump. Alright, let's even things a little. Go for it. What's going on? Okay. Right. That's good. That's not good. No! Oh, thank God we blocked it. Come back here, ball. Off you go, Tizzo. So we need to flutter over these. Oh, no, that's fine. Get it! But it's only 15. Get there, get there. Throw it to Headwin. Now, how are we going to do this? Throw it back to Pamifer and get in there. Brilliant, that was better. We're not blocking any of the flying adversaries, are we? Which is a bit of a shame. So I need to learn how to block. That's what I want to do. Oh crap! <laughs> we fell into the fire! Take you out. Nice dodge, Edwin. Not so nice. Oh crap, they scored! Probably got 40 left, and what have they got? 35 or something like that? Right, we need to go. Oh, Tizzo. That was terrible. Jump that. Nice one. Jump into the flame. Five left. This has been an absolute disgrace of a display, but we're almost there. Damn you, Pamifer. You are not true, you are no true Dayan. So think that you have the gall to call me sister, still, after everything you wrought upon us. 
I hate to break it to you, Tamifa, but I don't think my actions, however much they hurt you, had any effect on our familial status. <laughs> Look, I know I wronged you. That's why I'm here. You don't know my side of the story. Your side of the story? If I wanted to hear more lies and deceptions, I ought to have asked the Commonwealth to stay in my sentence for a while. Well, if you've come all this way to face me, Pamifa, then come and do it. You and me! You think that you see Pamifa shake her head. Everyone, stay back. Oh, this is going to be rough. Prevail over Tamifa. Yes, we got her! <laughs> No, she got us. Okay. Can we get it back? No! Oh, that was a close one. Okay, we need to fly. Like so. I think we've got it. We have. Thank goodness. <laughs> that was very close there. Oh. That was... I'm not proud of that, I'll be honest. You reckon a perfectly agreeable performance? I thought it was god-awful. You commonwealth filth! Only through that traitor's help could you have beaten us. You postponed the coming of our liberty, but we are ever patient, and our sisters on the other side shall have their day, with or without my aid. Tamifa, wait, please. You found good comfort there, Pamifa. May you wither here with them. I hope sincerely that we shan't ever meet again. Pamatha stands motionless as her blood sister departs. And what has Tizo got to say about all that? Tizo is trying to let Pamatha know that others are returning to the wagon. Sure, I don't see why not. So what is the story with them two? That was a good show by Hedwin, I think, at least. Come on! Yeah, you leveled up! Well done, Tizo! To have a certain depth of knowledge. Tizzo just had a flash of inspiration about his role in the rites and as part of the Nightwings. Brilliant news. So, what should we take? After casting his implodability, Tizzo returns much faster than usual. That's a pretty good one. Tizzo implodes implodability can banish adversaries in a much wider area. Right. You know what? I think we're going to go for safe return, maybe? Mm, oh god, I don't know. I actually don't know. Or a wider area. What's his hope? His hope's 21. No, let's go quicker return. Oh, look how close Pamifa is to levelling up. Almost at 2, but not quite. That's a shame. She'll get there next time, if we use her again. I'm sure we will. Shouldn't that say 1? Rights conducted? We'll see. Until the stars align. Indeed, until the stars align. In the rights, press X to block airborne adversaries and attempt to jump, flutter, or fly. Okay, so we need to get much better at that. Because we did not do good at all. After vanquishing the essence in a pitched battle, you and the others return to your wagon to consider your next move and how best to integrate Pamifa into the group. Don't worry, I won't be staying any longer than it takes. I like my fresh air so I can sleep up on the roof. I trust the rights will cause my path and Tamifas to cross again before long. You're welcome with us for now, Pamifa. Trust is what got us here. Isn't that right, Rookie? But Rookie does not seem to hear the question. He has been rather quiet since first encountering your new guest. <laughs> Pamifa shoots him one of her smiles. He stammers about something about having to check the wagon wheels again. He runs off. During this discussion, the minstrel pulls you aside. Reader, I ask a moment of your time outside. Oh, what the hell's up with Rookie then? There is somewhere I may ask we go, here in the Black Basin, Reader. By your leave, of course, and provided that the stars allow it. Would you look upon them for us, please? Okay, sure. That was our next destination. We can do that for you, Lone Minstrel, but maybe you should fit us in. How's it here? Lou, the Vernal Star. The Vernal Star burns bright over the densest woods in the Black Basin. Dense woods? Oh, wow, look at that blossom tree. That looks beautiful. The Glade of Lou, directly due west. Then, it is just as my client indicated. Is this sandalwood? According to the stars, the next riot shall commence here. The great sap scholar Lou Scor uh, Sclorian here vanquished the root titan Limbless Arizek. Wow, these names. This client of yours, our informant, Sandalwood, he entrusted us with this wagon, this quest. Why? What does he want from us? You may ask him yourself. He awaits us somewhere in waking, somewhere in Waking Wood, due west. I think we've read this, haven't we? Yeah, we've read about Waking Wood before. 
How do we find him? He shall find us. Weird. It seems you are soon to finally meet Sounderwood at dawn. You shall have to cross a single narrow path leading west where he supposedly awaits. Okay, well before we get to that, we need to talk to someone in the wagon. And it is Pamitha. How are you doing, Pamitha? Are you settling in okay? You approached Pamitha, who was... I keep going to call her Tamitha. Anyway, he was kept to herself since she joined your small band. You sense she's unaware of you as she preens her flight feathers, but then she speaks up before you can do the same. Come to check up on me, Reader darling. In those first moments when we met, the lack of confidence which you related to that nice headwind boy, it's understandable you'd not see past these wings. Ooh, so she didn't... She doesn't like how we couldn't make a formal opinion on her. One of your kind's ancient enemies just happens to insert himself into your group, and you just go with it? However, I assure you that my motives here are plain. You'll see. I've been in business with my blood sister, Tamitha, and nothing more. You briefly met, I think. She's quite a catch. As to the little quibble between us, well, it's a long story, all in all. One that's frankly no one's business but hers and mine. Surely we'll run into her again, maybe not soon, but in time. And we have the rest of our long lives to wait. Anyway, happy to aid you in your quest until such time, especially to the extent that it aids me in mine. A simple exchange. Until then, stay vigilant, darling. You didn't concern yourself with making small talk with someone like me. And besides, we hearts have a saying. Liars abound. She swoops away before you can respond. Oh, I don't like her. I don't like her. She's got an ego or an attitude. <laughs> I'm only trying to make friends, you know. Is this what she brought? Pamitha's moonshine. Holy crap, I'm meant to drink that stuff? Gets close at hand in the off chance of a good occasion, or a very bad one. It's got a bloody cobra in there. You would not catch me drinking that. Well, maybe a little bit, just to say I did, but I can't imagine I'll drink it regularly. Anyway, let's um, let's see where we are, so we can head back outside and continue our journey. But I think it would make more sense to end this episode there. So, if you enjoyed this Let's Play of Pyre, please go ahead and leave a like. It helps out a great deal, and I really do appreciate it, so thank you. If you would like to see more, we're going to head and finally meet the revered Sounderwood, the big enigma of this whole game. Go ahead and subscribe, and I'll bring that to you. If you've got any questions you want to raise, what do you think of Pamphar? Do you prefer Team Pammy or Team Tammy? <laughs> Don't know where I was going with that, but leave a comment below and I'll make sure I'll get back to you. Alright, see you!